car. I would love to give my testimony. Yes, welcome, sister. Okay, thank you. Morning, congregation. Morning. Good morning. Morning. Uh, my name is my name is Hileni Emmanuel. Uh, I'm in Namibia. Uh, I just want to give my testimony. Uh, I was I'm the one who was having a heart problem, surviving on a gun machine on my heart that is uh, supporting my heart to, to beat. It's called the pacemaker. Uh, 2022, last year, uh, Prophet, Papa Prophet uh, Jacob Masiga came to Namibia. And then I was, uh, I was told about him. My cousin called me and told me about him. By the time she told me, I was not having, I was not having money to come and attend the one-on-one -on -one with prophet. But I decided, due to my uh, disease that is now bothering me and that is almost trying to take my life, I decided to make plans so that I can just come and and see the man of God. I came. I came late and I didn't have any appointment at all. And then when I came, I came even late. When I came, everybody was most of the everybody was already on list, and I was not on the list. I came and I talked to Meme Rosina. I told her, and then she said, "Okay, let me go and and and, and talk to 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 men of God and hear what he's gonna say." Luckily, due to, I, I believe he already saw, I, that was my belief that he saw me already when I was outside before he met me even, before he see me. So I, he, he, I, 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 I got that chance. I was the last, last person on the, on, on, to, be, to talk to him because due to, I didn't have an appointment. They told me, okay, you'll be the last. And then after you, then Papa will do the prayer. I came in, I talked to him, and I told him my problem that I was having, uh, I'm having a heart problem and all those stuff. And then he said, no, what did the doctor say? He, I told him straight that the doctor said, for the rest of my life, I'll live with the pacemaker, I'll survive on the pacemaker. And then he said, God didn't create you with that, so the Almighty will heal you. And then from there, he, he, we came in, all of us, for prayer. He touched me, and immediately I felt that in my body, the healing in my body. I, I was healed the same night. I even told everybody there in the, in the service that I am healed. And then after two weeks, I went to the doctor last year. And then they they told me that the, my heart healed. They were asking, the doctor was asking, what did you do? I said, I didn't do anything, only prayers. A man of Amen. God anointing me, and then that's the only thing that happened. And then the doctor said, you know, sometimes people don't believe or their belief is different. And then he said, oh, okay. Anyway, whatever you did, it works and then I, I, he said okay but to be on the safe side i have to give you you have to come back after four months you have to come back to us just to see if it's the same result that you're gonna get last two week the friday on the 27th on the 27th of january 2023 was the date that i was having an appointment with the same doctor in the in the hospital at the hospital i went and they are go through all the checkup all the process that i have to go through that i normally go through all the process until the last process and then the technician were even shocked they were like ah 
you are having a second degree heart collapse but your heart healed how come i say only the the the, the almighty and due to the uh, anointing of the prophet jacob masiga it works the oh. prayer works wonderfully due to my faith because i was saving that faith that one day one day the almighty might touch me and I'm, i'll be healed he will heal me and then i went then she say okay go to the doctor we are going to give the result to the doctor when you went in doctor will tell you everything i went in and then he said you are healed your heart is totally normal like mine i don't know how it comes but you are totally healed and then i told i asked him now doctor okay if you say i'm healed now how healed he said no 100% your heart is recovered this is the second time and there won't be any mistake and then he said and i asked now what about this machine that is in my body then he said no due to medical whatever thing they were talking they won't be able to remove it but i'm healed they will just put the volume they reduce the volume they they reduce it and they just leave it a little bit they say they can't switch it off totally but they, the whole volume is is off so and i just want to say thank you to the almighty thank you uh, papa daddy prophet masiga thank you for for coming to namibia because i was planning my family we were planning to go outside namibia to go see any man of god so that they can just heal me because my heart was just getting worse now i am healthy i am healed i'm doing everything that the doctor say i must not do now i can do everything i do the washing i do the ironing i do everything on my own without any assistant i'm work distance long distance that i normally didn't do and i want to thank prophet jacob masiga for coming to namibia and i know that that was just the plan of the almighty that sending him here and i am now totally healed my kids are now happy they were always stressed every night waking up uh, feeding me taking me sometimes to the to, uh, to the to the toilet or to the loo and now i can do anything I, i'm cooking i'm eating on my own i'm just enjoying my life with my kids and i thank you papa and i want to thank almighty and i want to thank the uh, um, pmi family for your prayer and I'm, I'm i'm i don't know what to say i'm really happy i am happy and i'm healthy and i'm healed thank you lord thank you almighty for the healing hallelujah i have thank a message
like to I like to take this opportunity to welcome you all into this Sunday service and uh, we are congregating here once again uh, to hear from God and to worship God we are congregating in this place to hear from God and also to offer our worship unto him it is the will of God uh, for us to hear from him and it is the will of God to worship him the Bible says I want you to read for me in the book of John chapter number 4 John chapter number 4 verse number 23 John chapter number 4 and verse number 23 John 4 23 John 4 It says, but the time is coming and it is already here when by the power of God's spirit people will worship the Father as he really is offering him the true worship that he wants. Do you, do you have someone online with King James Version? Yes. Read for me uh, verse 23 and verse 24. Uh, verse 23 and verse? John 4, 23 but, and 24. But the hour come, come, and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeking such to worship him. 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. They that worship him must worship, must, say must. 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 Do you know the meaning of the word must? <laughs> yes, Papa. Mandatory. It is, mandat it is, it is not a suggestion. It is a must. It is mandatory. They that worship God must worship in the spirit and in truth. Say in spirit. In spirit. In, in spirit. spirit. <laughs> um, I have been having some questions from people. Sometimes they're asking, how, how do I know that my prayer has been, you know, has been received by God? Or, or my prayer is hard. Are you following me? Yes, yes. How do I know that my offering has been accepted? How do I know that my worship has been accepted? How do I know? How do I know that God is watching me? How do I know that God is avenging my enemy? I know that I have hope for tomorrow even though things are tough right now how do I know that I'm going to sail through and that is why today I want to talk about the topic the power of forgiveness say the power of forgiveness power of forgiveness the power of forgiveness say the power of forgiveness of God the power of forgiveness. The way you are speaking is like you are coming from Casablanca. As I say, the power of forgiveness. <laughs> the power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Today, I want you to follow me very closely because uh, I will not take much more time, but I want to make sure that you receive the the message that God has for you today is very important. In the book of uh, Luke, 
uh, chapter number 4 talking about the story of Jesus when he had just been baptized we are told the spirit of the Lord took him and led him into the wilderness to go and fast for 40 days and 40 nights and to be tempted of the devil it was it was part and parcel of the entire redemption plan are you here we're here the holy spirit led jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil while also he was fasting uh, for 40 days and 40 nights and when you read the book of first uh, corinthians chapter number 10 and verse number 13 the bible says there is no temptation there is no hey, let's go there let's go there first corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 13 i want you to read for me very quickly don't slow me down please today i want to be very quick first corinthians chapter number 10 and verse number 13 jesus being laid of the holy spirit into the wilderness he went to and also to be tempted of the devil to fast and also to be tempted of the devil but let's let's hear what the bible says in the book of first uh, corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 13 10 verse 13 no temptations have overtaken you except what is common to mankind now temptation is common to who mankind did, did he say it's common to God? No. Temptation is common to who? Mankind. And who is mankind? We are us. It is us. Hello? Am I speaking to some people here? Yes, yes. Yes, Papa. The Bible says temptations, let me put it in plural, temptations are common to men temptations are common as a matter of fact that's why i've quoted luke in the book of luke chapter 4 jesus was led by the spirit of god to be tempted of the devil now let me take you back let's not continue there i will be jumping from scripture to scripture when jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray if you read and interrogate the the structure that is a structure it's not the prayer it's the structure hello hello i cannot come here and and tell you you know and like tell you exactly what to pray from word after word after word no i'll take i'll give you a skeleton or a what you call a template always or, or a structure use that structure now to do what to pray if you're hearing me say amen amen I say, if you're hearing me, say amen. 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 Now, let me, let me give amen. you an example. Let me give you an example. Uh, when Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray, he cannot tell you how to pray as exactly what you should pray, but he'll give you what you call guidance. <laughs> he will give you a guidance. Yes. Amen. Because... He is supposed to guide you. Now listen. When he was teaching the disciple how to pray, he says, "Say, our Father who art in in heaven, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done where on here earth. on, as it is what in heaven. Give us this." Our daily bread. Please give us this day our daily bread. And forgive what? Our sins. As you also do what? Forgive others. And he says, don't lead us into temptation. Don't lead us into temptation. But temptation. deliver us from the evil. evil. Don't lead us into temptation. 
For as a, as a good, I know you're looking at me so that I can, I can. No, I'm giving you this is an assignment. Jesus says temptations are common to men. I mean, uh, Paul says temptations are common to men. To men. And then Jesus here, we're told he was led by the Spirit of God to be tempted of the devil. The same Jesus now tells when you pray, ask the Father not to lead you into temptation, but to deliver you from evil. Hello? Hello? People have interpreted that prayer, especially the part of that prayer, to mean that don't lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Meaning you are not supposed to undergo through temptation. So you are telling God, I don't want, I don't want to go through temptation. So don't lead me into temptation. Ah, Jesus was led by the Spirit of God to be tempted of the devil. So bet, the better interpretation of that prayer template is that help us not to fall into temptation. There is one thing to be led, to be tempted, to be led and to be tempted to, of the devil. And when you are being tempted, you, you are not supposed to fall to the temptation. I don't know if you are following me, somebody. We are following you. So, temptation is not a problem. Falling into temptation is a problem. So, the prayer here is, not to be exempted from being tempted. You will be tempted. But the prayer here is that I must not fall into the temptation. The temptation must not accomplish it is, you know, end game. I must not fall into. So I need to be delivered from falling because I will, I will go through temptation. But as I'm going through temptation, I don't want to fall into the So don't lead us, mean, don't allow us to fall. Yes, yes, thank you, Lord. Do you have a clue now? Yes, we have. Based on those three scriptures I've given you, in the book of Luke, chapter 4, where we see the Holy Spirit leading Jesus to be tempted of the devil. And then we see Paul talking about in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that temptation is common to man. And the same scripture says, but God is faithful. Say God is faithful. God is faithful. Say God is faithful. God is faithful. How? He will not allow. That's now the explanation. For he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. Yes. But will with the same temptation make a way. Can you read for me? Why am I quoting? And you have got the Bible. Quickly. First Corinthians 10, 13. And another person online, please. The same, same, same chapter and verse, but in King James Version. You are going to read that one because I'm very much convinced with King James. Please, let's go. 10, 13. Yes. No temptations has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. Uh-huh. And God is faithful. Uh -huh. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. But, but when you are tempted, uh, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So that you can endure. King James says, so that you can stand. Hey, someone online. King James. Am I talking to Muslims or what is the someone online please King James Version 1 Corinthians 10 13 La Coprados Keteriza Tolia say thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus I cannot hear you say thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus Jesus I cannot hear you say thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus can you read for me that verse please in King James Version 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 KJV there hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape 
that ye may be able to bear it. He will make a way for you to escape. Meaning to say, temptation has a role in your life as a Christian. And the role of the temptation is not to put you down. It's not to make you fall to it. And God, as you are going through temptation, the Bible says, God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able. So he knows that he has got, you have an ability in you which God puts in you and he knows how to measure your own ability. Hey, are you here? We are here. Say the power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. I, I cannot hear you. Say the power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. I was listening to the testimony uh, of Heleni. Is it Heleni? Yes, Papa. And I remember that, that, that story. It's Heleni, Papa. I remember that story when I was in Namibia. And uh, after I prayed for her, she was coming to the meeting. Now, one thing was this. She went to the doctor. She was tested. And there was a, a tremendous change from the result that came. And she was told to go back after some number of months to ascertain whatever they have seen. Are you here? We are here. And I, I said when I'm standing here that that testimony is perfected. Say perfection. 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 I cannot hear you. Say perfection. 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 I am wondering when someone, when, when God does something small, let me use the word small. When God does something small, you disappear in the thin air. As if that is exactly what you wanted in the entire life. There is much more than what God wants to do in your life than what you have received so far. Say amen. 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 And number two, God has a plan for your life. So when you dedicate your life to God, he takes over and he makes sure that the plan of the enemy will not prevail over your life because yes, you are not under the mercy of the enemy. You are under the grace of God, your heavenly father. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Are you here? We are here. Say the power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. Power of forgiveness. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let me explain something about this topic of today so that as we continue you can have a better understanding. And I said I'm going to be very brief today because I've realized when I speak too much you don't understand anything. You know? Because I talk too much. So I will speak briefly and we'll continue from there next time. Hello? Hello. So I want just to lay a foundation. Say the power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. Now the message that I have today. Are you here? We are here. The message that I have today. The devil tried three times to change it. Even the title of the message itself. The devil tried how many times? Three times. Three times. I, I, I will not tell you what, what he said. That is not that is a non issue. But I'm telling you, he tried how many times? Three times. Three times. And I'm standing here and I'm going to teach or preach about the power of what? I cannot hear you. Say the power, the power of forgiveness. Of forgi the power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. Now, there are things that I want you to know and I want to lay a foundation as I continue with this topic, the power of forgiveness. And don't forget, we are in the year of divine direction. Say the year of divine direction. The year of divine direction. The year of direction. Please, those who are joining online, make sure there is no background noise because the machines are picking very high. Uh, every single sound 
even if you are breathing on that machine we hear your breath here please make sure it is your voice only say the power of forgiveness the power of forgiveness the power of forgiveness now listen when jesus came he was sent by god here on earth as captured in john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life now one of the commandments or one of the main reason why jesus came is so that he can pay on our behalf the wage of sin and the wage of sin is death jesus came to pay that which we could not pay by ourselves jesus came to pay that which other blood of animals could not be able to pay so it is only the blood of jesus that has got the potent in it to pay for all your sins say all my sins all my sins now let me explain here what is sin that is question number one and what is repentance hello hello if you don't understand exactly what sin is and you say me i am repenting i don't know what you are doing basically and if you don't know what repentance is and you say i'm repenting you don't know exactly what you're doing hello 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 i will begin with sin and i'm gonna i'm not gonna derive interpretation i mean the definition from the dictionary or whatever i'm just listening to what i have to say when you sin against god number number one you are you are not only sinning against god but but you are sinning against yourself are you following me we're following you when you sin against god someone may argue ah but jesus we are born again you know we were we are being forgiven we have been forgiven our our sins were washed away the same bible says if any man says that he has got no sin he makes god to become a liar he makes god to appear like a liar and truth is not in him so why 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 should we repent yet we have been forgiven now the forgiveness of sin is different there is one forgiveness of sin that takes you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god the kingdom of light are you following me yes yes that is a prayer of forgiveness whereby your sins are washed away and then you are taken from the kingdom of darkness of the devil into the kingdom of god now once you are taken from the kingdom of the devil into the kingdom of god number one the kingdom of the devil is here on earth and the kingdom of god is also here on earth so you have been you have not been removed from the world of sin so we are living in the world where sin dwells we are living in the world where sin dwells the bible says we are of god dear children but the whole world lies in wickedness we are of god we know that we are of god but the whole world lies in wickedness so in as much as you say i am born again hello hello i will not die but live i am not sick but i am healed but we are living in the world of sin sickness death and all that follow me closely and it is important to be aware that there is a sin factor here on earth i will not talk about sickness and other things i'm just concentrating on sin 
Father, I thank you and I bless your name. So many people who are born again, whose sins were forgiven, the enemy has succeeded to recruit them. While they are still retaining their righteousness status, they have been recruited to continue living in sin. And what is sin? Sin is to miss the mark. Say, miss the mark. Miss the mark. Sin is to fall short of the glory of God or to fall short of God's expectation on you. That is sin. So when God expects you to be here and you are not here, you are sinning against the Lord. When the Lord expects you to be operating from this level and you are not operating from this level, you are living in sin and you are sinning against the Lord. When the Lord expects you to do something and you are not doing it, you are living in sin. You are living in disobedience. You are living in rebellion. And you are only conscious about yourself, about your welfare, and not about what God thinks about you and expects you to do as far as you and him are concerned. I, I made a quotation one day and I said, in any given relationship, relationship is between two, I'm talking about two parties, two people. There are two parties in a relationship. So in any given relationship, if one party meets the expectation of the other party, why the other party does not meet the expectation of the other party, meaning the other party does not reciprocate what has been done to the other party, then that relationship becomes automatically dysfunctional. There is no relationship that can stand where one party meets the expectation of the other while this other does not meet the expectation of the other. So as long as you have got expectations in your heart and those expectations are directed to God, God also has expectations that he wants you to meet. Yes, amen. You quoted Matthew 28 and verse number 18 to verse number 19 in your prayer. Yes. Eh? Matthew yes. 28. Eh? If I take you to verse number 16, Jesus came and made the disciples at, at the mountain that he appointed by himself. And he said, all power both in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go ye therefore to the whole world and preach the gospel. Make disciples out of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and, the, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I will be with you till the end of the world. Now, if you defy that simple instruction, you are living in rebellion to God's word, which is God's instruction about or over your life. Meaning you are living in sin. You are not meeting God's expectation of you. Hello? Hello? I am laying a foundation. I don't know if you are hearing what I'm saying. We are hearing, we are hearing. So to sin is to fall short of the glory of God. There is what you call the glory of who? Say the glory of God. The glory of God. Say the glory of God. The glory of God. The glory of God. Glory of God. Isaiah, the glory of God. Isaiah chapter 60. No. And verse number one says, yeah. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. I repeat, Arise, shine, for thy glory. Glory of God. Arise, shine, for thy what? Thy light is come. 
And the glory of the Lord. And the glory of the Lord has risen who? Upon who? Upon, upon you. Me. Say upon me. Upon me. So when you sin, you no longer shine. <laughs> when you sin, you are just wallowing on the ground. When you sin, you have already fallen short of the glory of God. So you are operating on autopilot. You can land anywhere, anytime without your, your permission. You are operating by your own fuel. Not by the grace of God. Say the power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. When you receive a prophecy or when you receive a word from the Lord that you are going to become this and that and that you are not going to become that because God has said but you are going to become that by you observing the requirements that you must observe so that you can create a conducive environment for what God has spoken about you to come to pass Yes, amen. When I am talking about protection, and I pray for you for protection, one of the ways God protects his people is, number one, when you want to travel, and then you feel in your heart, heaviness, not fear, heaviness. That is a sign you must not travel. So that is another way that God is protecting you from what is, for, from what is waiting for you on that journey. That is, so instructions. God's instruction is part and parcel of your protection agenda. Hello? Hello? Why, why are you looking at me as if I'm speaking Greek? Huh? Praise the Lord. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a role to play. This kingdom is not a kingdom of lazy people. You have a role to play. You must understand your role and play it very well. You hear me? Yes, yes. Last night, uh, actually this message, I received it last night. Uh, and I received it also in almost like four different dimensions. Say four dimensions. Four dimensions. I'm the one who told you here, God does not speak only in one way. You know, God has got many ways to speak to his people. And I told you, God speaks to me in different ways. And I told you, after receiving the message, the enemy was giving me some, something different. And I said, no. And, and, and he was also giving me some headline. This is, the, this is, the, this is the, the title of the message. And I said, no. And I stood here and I say, the power of what? Forgiveness. The power of what? Forgiveness. <laughs> I know you are waiting to hear that you are going to America. No, you, America is not an issue. This what I'm talking about is an issue here. Say I hear you, sir. I hear you, sir. Say I hear you, sir. I hear you, sir. I hear you, sir. The power of forgiveness. God is love. And he sent his son here on earth so that he can take the place our place because we could not be able to pay we could not be able to die for our own sins so Jesus came to pay so it is the father that bought us with a precious blood which is being referred to as what we are bought with a price so there is a price tag on your head you are not a nonsense person. No, you are a very important person. For you to be bought by the blood of Jesus, you must be very important. Yes. Tell, tell your neighbor, for you to be bought by the blood of Jesus. For you to be bought by the blood of Jesus. You must be very important. You must be very important. Hey, the way you are speaking is like you don't know that you are very... I said, for you to be bought by the blood of Jesus. For you to be bought by the blood of Jesus. You must be a very important person. Must be very important person. Must be very important person. Now, 
what importance are you in the kingdom of God? Now, the importance I'm talking about is not about you drinking porridge every single day. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. No, you must be able to know what is important about me in God's kingdom. What is it that makes me important? What is it? You could be a son of a president, but if you don't know what it means by being a son of a president, you can suffer the same suffering other people are suffering whose fathers are sub chiefs in the village. So, sin or to sin is to fall short of God's expectation. It's not to live up to the expectations of God on your life. That is sin. Now let me come to repentance. And of course, I'm just giving a definition. Let me come to repent. What, what is repentance? There are three things I want to 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 define. I've already defined what sin is. I'm coming to repentance. And I, I'm not just defining, but I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you what repentance is. I want to teach you what repentance is. Say amen. Amen. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. For the wages of what? Of sin is? Death. For the wages of sin is what? Death. Meaning, sin leads to death. death. Now, what is death? Hey, those online, what is death? You see how you see how, you see, you see how the environment is very quiet. Death is death. Huh? Death is death. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I say hallelujah, somebody. Amen. 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 Now, a perfect description of death, number one, is absence of light. Absence of what? Light. Light. Number two, Definition of death is separation from God. Separation from? The Bible says God is not a God of the dead. He's the God of the living. Now, when someone has died, it means that person has been separated away from God. Because God is the source of life. So when you are separated from God, you are already dead. And what separates men from God? Sin. Sin is what separated us from God. So what Jesus came is not just for us to be forgiven, but for us to be reconciled back to God the Father. So when you are reconciled back to God, you are alive. When you are not reconciled to God, you are dead. Okay, John 3 6. We only know John 3 16. Go to 17. Go to 17. The one online, please. Read verse number 17 of John chapter 3. You only you only you in prem, in whatever school. And for God so love the world that he gave you. But you don't know what verse 17 says. Read verse 17. Verse 17. Hey, King James Version. Somebody online. And then we'll come to an NIV version. Be very quickly. In John chapter 3 verse 17. John chapter 3 verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God did not, did not send his son into the world to condemn. To condemn. No. No. But what? Hey, read that. But 
but that the world through him might be saved. The world through him might be what? Saved. And anyone who will believe in God in his heart and confession is made through the mouth, he will receive salvation. He will be saved. That is how people bo are get born again. But being born again is not the end game. Jesus did not come here to, you know, to, 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 to save you and disappear. That is not the end game. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are here. And that is why I told you, God came to, recon I mean, Jesus came to reconcile us to the Father so that we can establish a relationship that we had with the Father before. You hear me? We hear you. So you no longer are living by yourself, but you're living a life that is shared together with God. You, you tell God, I give my life, I, 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 I dedicate my life unto you. So you, you see this now to become, to become your own man and your own woman. There is someone who also is in your life who is involved in your day to day's affair and how you live your life. Because you have invited him to into your life. So you are not running your own life anymore. He is the one who is on their steering wheel and is the one who is running the what? The affairs of your life. Say amen. Amen. Unfortunately, yes, we are born again, but we have not allowed God to be on the steering wheel to run our lives. We are running our own lives. We have got our own plans. We have got our own resolutions. Every new year, we come with a new year resolutions. And if I ask you, what did God speak to you about this year? Zero. Blank. And you come with some more, 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 more Kenya. God says, I shall not die. Shut up. He says, he says where? In whatever you read there in those whatever 2023 uh, these are the things that I must achieve in 2023 as my new year resolution there is nothing like new year's resolution there is nothing like new year and I told you I am here I see spiritually whatever you write on those things most people are writing by fire by thunder in 2023 I must be married Sister, you have been speaking like that since 19, 1982. Hmm? Don't you know that this thing is not, it, they, God, it's not working? Seriously, it is not working. Sit down and evaluate. Are you following what I'm saying? We are following. It is not what you speak that matters. There are some things that may, must be put into consideration if you are to realize anything that God has already spoken in your life. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, yes. So the wages of sin is Death. death and death is to be separated from God when you are separated from God you are dead even though you are still walking here on earth so you think that just death is when someone loses his life here on earth no who told you that is just one part of you it's just one part of you God God formed you you know your body your soul your spirit comprises a man so when the body you know dies does it mean that you are dead? You think you are dead because you think you are a body. Why do we know and believe that God is alive? Yes, yet God does not have the body we have. Why do you think that when your body dies that you are dead? Yet God who we believe is alive does not have a body like yours. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And this is the tricks the devil is playing. The devil has preached to you for many years since you are born that you are your body. So when something is wrong with your body, you, 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 are, you are coming here, hallelujah, I am sick. Who said you are sick? And who are you referring to? It is the spirit. Don't Jesus says, it is what? It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. 
The words I am speaking, they are spirit and they are life. So once you receive the words that Jesus is speaking, you already have life. Yes, the spirit of life enters in you. Amen. So your body is alive because you are there in that body. Oh, yes. So you are not your body. You are a spirit. Amen. You possess a soul. And you live in a physical body. This body that you have is the one that allows you to be here on earth legally. Once the body dies, you are not supposed to be here again. That's why when someone dies, and then for some reasons, that you, you, you meet that person on the road, you run away. Because the license to be here on earth has expired. Are you hearing me somebody? And before the body dies, something always happens before. So instead of looking or taking care of that, you are only here taking care of the body. Are you following me somebody? We are following you. Say the power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. Say the power of forgiveness. Power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. Now let me make my statement very clear. Please listen to me. You may have received prophecies. You may have read the Bible, the Word of God, which says that blah 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 about you. That is a good thing. But there is one thing I want you to put into consideration. Are you hearing me? We are getting you. You need to live a life of sanctification. You need to live a life of sanctification. And how do you live a life of, of sanctification? Number one, you don't look at yourself as a sinner. You are not a sinner. Say amen. Amen. By virtue of receiving Jesus and believing in him, you are no longer a sinner. You are not looked, you are not addressed as a sinner. You are not a sinner. Say, I'm not a sinner. I'm not a sinner. If you know you are born again, say, I am not a sinner. I am not a sinner. I am not a sinner. I'm not a sinner. You lose your sin status the day you accepted Jesus into your life because Jesus is the final sacrifice for our sins so he is the ultimate sacrifice for our sins so when you receive Jesus into your life you are no longer a sinner hello hello Hello. Hello. This is a very dangerous topic. I want you to follow me. Don't say, eh? don't just quote me halfway. You must listen to the entire sermon. Say, I hear you, sir. I hear you, sir. So, now that you are not a sinner, God does not expect you to live in sin again. You hear me? God does not expect you to do what? To live in sin. I don't know if you're following me today. We're following you. Following you, sir. As a matter of fact, uh, this message that I, I, which I now I am I'm trying to empty this message. I'm trying to, you know, get it out. The reason why most of the things that you have prayed for and they have not materialized is not because God has not heard your prayer God hears your prayers it's not that God does not love you God loves you but there is a principle that you have there is a there, there is one of the principles that you have you have you have you have violated there is one of the principles that you have violated that is why even some people are laying hands on others 
and nothing happens is because one of the principles has been violated. Hello. Hello. Let me explain. If you live in sin, hmm? if you live in sin, and then you come and say, <clears throat> Let Rosa Prados Kara, every witch must die. What you are doing is that you are committing suicide yourself. You have not sorted out yourself, and you come out and you begin to say, Every witch must die. It does not happen like that. You have not sorted out. Let me come closer to you, to you because that's, this is the example that you like so much. You have not sorted out your life. And the other previous relationship ended. Now you have entered into a new relationship. And you have never sorted out yourself. You will undergo the same thing on a higher degree in scale. And you say relationship nowadays don't work. Who are you speaking for? Who told you relationship? It is you who is not working. It is you. Don't tell us the relationship will not work. It is you. You are speaking about yourself. You don't work. You don't pray. God, God, give me a, a, a God-fearing husband. Seriously. If you are God-fearing, the man that's going to marry you will become, or he is already, a God-fearing. The same seed you are sowing today you will reap. You might have stolen something from someone. Wait. It's a matter of time. Here on earth. Even if you say, by fire, by thunder. No. The, the seed you saw, you know, has, it, it, was, it was planted in a good soil. And, and the devil has been watering it properly. You are, you are waiting for a harvest. It is only God who can reverse that. And that is why there is what you call sin. And then there is what you call the consequences of sin. People have repented of their sins, but they have not been delivered out of the consequences of the sins that they have repented. So you think automatically when you ask for forgiveness, or oh, forgive me for what I did, then automatically you are also delivered from the consequences of your sins. No. You must be able to address the consequences of sin factor. Say, I hear you, sir. I hear you, sir. Now, the Bible says there is what you call what you, there's what you call the instrument of death. The instrument? Death. And sickness is one of them. Witchcraft is one of them. And there are so many. Instrument of what? Of death. death. So if you have asked for forgiveness and then you have not dealt with the consequences of the sins, whose I mean that were forgiven, then you will still undergo through the uh, you know through, to, through the, the roughness and the destruction and the, and the molestation of the consequences of your sin so you don't just ask forgiveness and that's why I say what is repentance now repentance is to turn away from the way that if you are going in this direction and you are told this is the wrong direction you stop okay you stop and you turn and go in the right direction that is repentance the bible says in the book of is it second chronicles chapter number seven and verse number 14 go to second chronicles i don't know if it's first or second second chronicles Chapter 7 and verse 14. Say the power of forgiveness. Power of forgiveness. I cannot hear you say the power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. The power, the power of... Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 14. The Bible reads, If my people which are called by my name 
shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If my people, my people, not if the world, if my people who are called by my name shall do what? Shall humble themselves. Are you together? Hey, yes. read us. Yes. Shall do what? Humble themselves and pray and, and pray. seek my face. And seek my face. What will happen? And seek my faith. No, and do what again? And turn? And turn from their wicked ways. And turn from their wicked ways. That's what I wanted to say. And turn from their wicked ways. There is a way that seemeth right in the eyes of man, but the end are the ways of death. Ways. There is one way that seemeth right in the eyes of man, but the end are the ways of death. So if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Are you hearing? Yes. So turning away from the way that you are going is part of repentance. That is repentance. You cannot, you cannot tell me that you have repented and you are still moving in the same direction. You cannot tell me that you have repented and you are still doing the same thing over and over again. Okay, let me say this. To repent is not to say, I am sorry. Hello? Hello? If, I, if, if, you, if you stand here and then I slap you, bah! one slap, and then I, I tell you, hey, sorry. And then I give you another slap, bah! sorry. Bah! Before I reach five, you will have jumped. You hear me? Uh, are you hearing me? Yes, yes, we are hearing you. Yes. Now, to say I am sorry, eh? to say I am sorry is not repentance. You are just sorry for whatever you have done. But the potential to continue doing it is still there. You are just sorry for what you have done. But the potential to continue doing the same thing is still there. So repentance is to turn from your wicked ways. If you are going in that direction, you turn and you go in a different direction. That is repentance. Hello? Hello? To repent is to, rest, is to restrain, is to back off from the thing that you are doing. You back off. That is repentance. That is true repentance. And the message is God wants you to repent. God wants you to turn from your wicked ways. These are the things that have made it difficult for you to receive what you are supposed to have received even last year but one. And you think what is going to help you is to fly to America for, for, for one bishop there to pray for you. No, the same bishop in America is praying to the same God that I'm praying to here in Africa. The same God that, the same God that they are praying to in any other country as believers and Christians is the same God that you are praying to today here. The problem is not who is praying for you. The problem is not which church you are in. It has got nothing to do with the church. It has got nothing to do with who is praying for you. It has everything to do with you as a person. And I was taken through a series of events and I was, able, I was able to see because I've been having questions. How comes this ABCD happened to this person? How comes ABCD happened to this person? Ladies and gentlemen, if your obedience is not complete, you cannot judge the disobedience of your enemy. If your obedience is not complete, you cannot judge the disobedience of your enemy. You take care of your affairs first. Before you pray for the salvation of other people out there, pray for your own salvation. Pray for your own forgiveness of sin. Say amen. Amen. 
before before you pray for 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 for, for people in afghanistan you pray for yourself fast you repent fast you make things right fast before you come to a man of god oh i want you eh by fire by thunder hey man of god ah, this, hey, hey. no before you do all those you must start sort out yourself fast one day jesus was teaching about this and he says if you have got something against your brother and it's time for offering please before you offer your offering go and make peace with your brother first and when that is done then come and give your offering because you cannot bribe god with your offering you cannot bribe god by your fastings and prayer prayer and fasting does not turn the neck of god to look the other way when you are doing things that are not expected of you prayer and fasting is not an aid is not going to aid you from your misbehaviors if you don't respect your husband and you are a prayerful woman it is a matter of time before that relationship goes to the south you and your prayer you and your fasting you and your prayer shawl you and your anointing oil you go to the everything goes south you cannot violate the principles that God has put in place and think that you are going to cure that with prayer and fasting you cannot bypass the provisions of the, that are principles that God has laid and you think by prayer and fasting prayer now is that god is going to overturn and look away from the disobedience to his principles it will not happen i know you not say amen because you are you are you are a victim now don't worry this is what will heal you this is what will set you free and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free say amen amen and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free free say amen amen man the, the issue is not uh, what is god thinking about me no god is thinking something good about you what are the what, what are the plans man of god what are the what are the, uh, what the plans i can tell you are good but what's the problem you are the problem and today i want you to begin this culture of internalizing your life and making sure that you live a sanctified life a consecrated life where you repent of your sins you walk away from the evil things that you've done so that your prayers may not be hindered so that your miracles may be able to manifest so that your testimonies can be sustained so that your testimonies can be replicated you hear what i'm saying I told you testimonies are meant to replicate themselves and I gave you an example of a woman who had an issue of the of, of, of blood for many years he had an issue of blood and one day she said the Bible says for she said if I shall touch the hem of his garment I shall be made whole and after speaking she went ahead and did exactly what she said and after touching the hem of the garment of Jesus she got healed and jesus said who touched me and the disciple says i there are so many people rubbing shoulder why are you saying something no there's someone who so faith is what touches god not your crimes it is faith so she touched the hem of the garment of jesus and then when you read the bible here one time jesus was going to a certain village and the entire village begged him please allow us to touch the hem of your garment why they had the story of the woman who touched the garment of jesus and she got healed so then jesus allowed them and said go ahead and they touched the hem of the garment of jesus and they were healed mean to say whatever god is doing in your life he wants to do the same through you to other people so when god blesses you with finances that finances are not yours you are a steward you are just a steward god has entrusted riches in your hand and he wants to see how do you behave with certain amount of money in your bank how do you be, how do you behave when you have certain business running in your name 
How many times do you pray? How many times do you fast? How many times do you give when you have this and that and that? So God knows you inside out. So prayer cannot change anything that God knows about you. It is you to change. Yes, amen. If you are lying every single day, you are lying and you are a prayerful person. Your prayer will not change the fact that you are a liar. Your prayers will not cover your lies. As a matter of fact, those lies are the ones that makes your prayers not to be answered. So when you change and you stop lying, which is repentance, the prayer you pray will be answered. So you are the hindrance to the manifestation of God's promises over your life. Not the devil. There's no way the devil can say no when God says yes. There is no way a human being can say no when God says yes. So if something is not happening in your life, don't look for a witch. Uh -uh. Look for yourself. You always point fingers. It is the devil. It is a witch. It's my aunt. It's my brother. It's my whatever. No. Begin from yourself. So from today, you will begin from yourself. And make sure that your house is in order. Don't be deceived by signs, miracles, and wonders. Don't be deceived. Signs, miracles, and wonders can deceive people. I am telling you. The greatest man's need is not signs, miracles, and wonders. It is the presence of God. And I told you, the presence of God is what? Is life. The absence of God's presence is what? Is death. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. I decree and I declare that you will not die but live in the name of Jesus. I receive. I, I receive. And I declare that the presence of God will not leave you in the name of Jesus. I receive. I receive. I decree and I declare I that you will not live under the spell of sin anymore in the name of Jesus. I receive. I receive. I receive. I decree and declare sin shall be far away from you in the name of Jesus. I receive. I receive. I decree and I declare that the ravages of sin will no longer ravage your body in the name of Jesus. I receive. Stand up wherever you are and begin to pray. Father, every ravages of sin, let them be taken out from me. I am walking out from every sin and iniquity. I am not party to any sins. I am not party to any iniquity. I am not party to it. I repent of my sins and I want you to deliver me from the repercussions of my sin in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray that prayer wherever you are. Clap your hands and pray. 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 Raka se kato pradosh ke delika raba she ke delika. Clap your hands and pray. Pray, 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 pray. Se ke pado pradosh ke delika. Pray, 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 pray. I pray for the forgiveness of sin. Le ke delika rosa. Le pradosh ke rija ke delika. Le pradosh ke kaliza. Come on, pray, 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 pray. 
I want to hear you pray. I want to hear you pray. Pray. in Jesus mighty name in the name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name amen I want you to say sin will never have dominion over me again sin will never sin will have, never dominion, have dominion, dominion over me again one more time sin will sin never will have dominion, never be dominion, over, dominion over, over me again I, I, wa I, want you, I want you to speak from your heart say sin will never have dominion over me again Sin will never sin have will sin dominion, will never over, have over, dominion over, again. over me again. again. Now listen to me. As you are standing, the, the intercessors who was leading the session was reading a scripture where I say that you are the salt of the world. But if you lose your saltiness, you can only be thrown and be treaded on by men. Yes, you are the salt of the world. You are supposed to add value in this world. You are supposed to add value in your immediate environment. But if you lose your saltiness, what is the, what, what is the use of that salt? Yes, you are the salt. But if you as a salt loses your saltiness, then what is your use? You only have remain with the name the salt of the world but you have lost the saltiness so it is only empty talk but there is nothing to back what you are saying what makes you to lose your saltiness is the sin factor yes you have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God but if you keep on living in sin you lose your saltiness you can never shine as the light of the world anymore. You place a barrier between your miracle and you. You make it impossible for God to intervene in your case. And things become complicated in your lives and you become confused and you become bitter and, and things are becoming tough. Not because of your wicked uncle in the village. It is because of what you are doing. It's because of what you are supposed to do and you are not doing. When judgment comes, it is not your uncle who will be judged on your behalf. It is you who is going to be answerable to God. You must be a responsible Christian. You must be an accountable Christian. You must be able to listen to the voice of God. You cannot bypass or contravene the principles that God has laid down by himself and expect you to be blessed and expect you to be lifted up and expect you to be by and you have disobeyed you are living in disobedience that is bad it doesn't happen like that today i want you to pray father for every single thing that i've done that contravenes your principles for any kind of life i've lived that has not brought glory to you for every single words i've uttered with my mouth that has made me to fall short of your glory I want you to forgive me today and as you forgive me deliver me from them because i don't want to go in the same direction i am changing direction today not tomorrow 
today. So I repent of all my sins. I repent of every single thing that I've done that has separated me from you, that has made me to fall short of your glory, and I am ready to begin again with you. So give me another chance. Raise your voice and begin to pray that prayer wherever you are in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to hear you. I want to hear everyone praying. I want to hear everybody praying. Make sure, make sure your voice is heard. Your voice is heard. God, forgive me, my sins, my God, my shortcomings. In the name of Jesus Christ, Jehovah God, I pray, Jehovah God, I ask you for forgiveness. This day, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, my God, and you may deliver me, Jehovah God, in the name of Jesus Christ, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that I may give you a second cup in the name of Jesus Christ, my God, I thank you, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, my God, I ask you, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, my God, forgive me today. In the name of Jesus Christ, my God, this day, oh Lord, I have asked you, oh God, to forgive me today. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus, have mercy upon me today. In the name of Jesus Christ, my God, 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 my Anything that is standing between me and God, let it be destroyed in this altar. Let it be destroyed. Let it be destroyed. Let there be nothing that will stand between me and my miracle. I repent of all my sins. I repent of all my iniquities. I repent of my disobedience. I repent of my rebellion. Oh God, I pray for your mercy. I pray for your mercy. I pray for your mercy. Let there be a second chance. Let there be a second chance. Pray, 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 pray. Let your bed be better. Let brothers get it. Pray, 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 pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Put your right hand on your chest. Father, I pray for your children here. I pray for the forgiveness of sins. 
I pray that you may blot out every transgression and iniquity that is residing in their lives. I pray that they may not live in disobedience to your word. I pray that they will not live in rebellion but they will be able to live a life that is expected of you for the glory and honor of your name. Every sickness must depart from their bodies. Yes, Lord. Every witchcraft in their midst must be crushed to ashes. Yes, Lord. Every barrier standing on their way must be reduced to nothing. Yes, Lord. I pray for their deliverance today. Oh Lord. And as you forgive their sins, forgive us, Lord. which you will never remember them again anymore. Oh yes, Lord. Separate them from their sins. Yes, Lord. Sin will never have dominion over them anymore. Yes, Lord. Amen. Sin will never put them down again anymore. Oh yes, Lord. Amen. And I pray that their deliverance is permanent in the name of Jesus. Amen. I and I pray nothing shall hinder your miracles in the name of Jesus I receive Amen. and I pray that which the devil was using against you is hereby destroyed in the name of Jesus yes. and I pray that God has already given you a second chance begin a new journey with God and it is well with you in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. I decree it is done in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Shout, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive. I receive, I receive, I receive. I cannot hear you. Shout, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive. Whatever you are. I receive, I receive, I receive. I receive, I receive. I will repeat the chapter 7 of and verse 14 of 2nd Chronicles. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. I decree your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Oh, yes, Lord. I, I, receive. Receive. I receive. I decree your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. I receive. I, receive. I decree your land has been healed in the name of Jesus. Oh, I receive. Amen. I receive. I, receive. I decree your land has been healed in the name of Jesus. I receive. I decree you will never lack in the name of Jesus. I receive. I, I, receive. Receive. I seal your testimonies by the blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord. I seal your miracle by the blood of Jesus. Yes, I receive, Lord. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will rubber stamp your forehead so that the anointing of favor will open doors that were shut before you in the name of Jesus. You are above, you are not beneath. You are moving forward, you are never going backward. Yes, you are Lord. making progress, you are not stagnated in the name of Jesus. I receive. I receive. Stagnation is not the plan of God for your life. So you are moving out of that stagnation in Jesus' name. Yes, I receive. Amen. I receive. I receive. You are moving out of every captivity in the name of Jesus. I receive. I receive. I want to pray for your offering in the same time we are praying for repentance. I want to pray for your offering. It's part of the service. It's part of the worship. Everything that you do, you do it in spirit and in truth. If you're here and you have your, 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 your sacrifice, you have your tithe, you have your seed, you have your offering, any kind of giving that you're purposed to give in the house of God, I want you to lift it up. Uh, I mean to lift step right now whether you are paying through the bank you can raise your bank card or anything that is connected with the bank 
whether you're paying through your phone make sure your phone is lifted up if you are paying cash make sure that money is lifted up anything that is connected to your finances as god is delivering you as god is removing you from captivity you must also be taken out of financial captivity your money must be delivered your money must reach your address that is my prayer for you father i pray for each and every single person whose hand is lifted up and i touch every point of contact that is risen up today may you perform a miracles in their lives i decree today their offerings have been received and accepted their giving has been received and accepted and as you say that give and it shall be given back to you same measure pressed down shaking together and running over shall men give to your bosom that is the prayer i'm praying for them right now let them receive the same that they've given multiplied pressed down shaken together and running over and i speak the blessing of the lord which make it rich and he added no sorrow with it to be part and parcel of your life as you sojourn in this life journey may god go together with you may you experience revival in your finances may you experience a lot of breakthrough in your financial life in the mighty name of jesus i bless your business i bless the work of your hand i bless everything that is called by your name i bless whatever is the source of your income i decree that tap will not run dry it will keep on flowing and flowing and flowing in the name of jesus may you have the overflowing blessings in jesus mighty name i decree it is done in jesus mighty name we pray amen Amen. you may give the details have been shared with you and also those who are going to watch the details also are on the right hand or the left hand of the screen you are able to give those of you who are in kenya you can pay via mpesa or you can pay physically or those who are outside kenya there are also provision for you on how you can submit your 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 sacrifice submit your offering and together with your tithe and all that say amen 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 when you worship god you cannot worship god without your finances whenever you worship god without your finances you are bewitching your finances the same anointing that is coming upon you should be the same anointing that comes upon your finances another thing that also includes our children don't leave your children at home when you come to church don't leave your wife at home when you come to church unless there is a reason why your wife remains at home and in this era and generation even if your wife is at home they must join through zoom they must join through online platforms that you are making them available so that you don't have an I, actually there is no excuse as to why you must not attend a service whether physically or virtually say amen amen, amen. as a parent you are a custodian of that child and you will give an account before god on the life of that child you are making noise all over the place and say this is my child the day is coming you will know it's not yours you're just given a custody of that child are you hearing what i'm saying we are getting you cannot lift your hands before the lord and your children are watching cartoons you cannot be worshiping god and seeking the face of god and your children are, 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 are somewhere you know drinking porridge no you must be together as a family are you hearing what i'm saying yes yes you are paving or creating a way for your no matter how old they are it doesn't matter how old they are including the one in your womb hello hello you speak to your child say my child in the womb you are blessed you are covered nothing will touch you no evil plan of the enemy will will prevail against you are you here we are here don't 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 give us this hey, oh my god oh my god what, what is oh my god you speak to your child 
The Bible says, and I will give you mouth and wisdom that your adversary, your adversary can never gainsay or resist. Whatsoever you shall speak over your lives and over the life of your children, that shall be. Why do you keep quiet and you allow other evil people to speak over your children? You must tell your children you are blessed. You must tell your children we are living in this place temporarily because you are going to a better place. You must tell your children don't worry. What you are asking me to give you, you will have in plenty. Amen. That is not the time to say, eh? What? The, your, your father abandoned us seven years ago and you're asking, no, please forget about the father of that child if, if you're a single mother. If a man walked away from you two years, four years, five years and he has got nothing to do with the child, then that child is in your custody. Forget about the man. Why, why, why are you so quiet? Forget about the man. Amen. And and if you are a man and a woman walked away on you, stop crying at night. You are a, you are a disappointment to the community of men. I've never seen that had happen. Please move, accept and move on. I know you won't say amen. I'm telling you. Amen. A marriage is a union between a man and a woman. And that union came as a result of an agreement between the man and the woman. Not a pastor. Not a prophet. Not children. You are not brought together by children. You are not brought together by a pastor. A pastor comes into the picture after you have come together. And even the pastor says what God has joined. Let no man are you hearing me? We are hearing you. So the covenant you have, that is a covenant of marriage, is between a man and a woman. If one party violates the provisions of that covenant, it's over. You are just living on a borrowed leaf. So protect that which you have at this time. You may not see a value of that man who is living with you or you may not see a value of that woman that is living with you at this time. But I'm telling you, it's a matter of time. If God can open your eyes and see where you are going, not where you are, where you are going. The children of Israel were in Egypt. There was no hope in Egypt. And even when they were being delivered out of Egypt because it was a process, they were taken through wilderness. There was no hope through what you call deliverance process. But the outcome is always the best. And it is for only those who will endure that period of wilderness that are entitled. There are people who murmured during their deliverance. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, were, we, were, we were eating onions the earth opened and swallowed them, all of them. Don't be a mamara. Don't be a professional complainer. Look for something and say, I thank God for this. I thank God for that. And make sure you're looking, you are positive. Look for the positive thing. There are so many good things about you that you need to improve on and you need to thank God about and you need to work on that area. Don't look at your, eh? your failures of yesterday. Don't look at your weaknesses. Look at your strength points and make sure that you do well in those areas. Amen. Make sure you cover your husband. Make sure you cover your wife while you are working out things, the two of you. Don't expose your husband. Don't expose your wife. And I'm the, I'm, I think I'm the only preacher. I don't know about others because I don't listen to other people. I think I'm the only preacher who's, who, who I'm, I'm standing here at the altar. If worse comes to us, leave. 
go your way. I have seen on television a man, various you know situations where a man, a husband of a woman, kills a woman and kills the children. And when you when you find when you start to find out what's the problem, why 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 will the person who was supposed to protect the woman now turn to be a killer of the same woman? You find there was some they call it domestic issues, whatever it is. You don't need to reach that level. That's why I'm telling you, I advise people, if you if you have reached that extent, it's better you live and live. You know, it's better you come out of that marriage and, and, and remain alive than quoting scriptures upside down. God hates divorce, so you stay there. Okay. Let's, let's wait. We will bury you. And for me, I'll not come into a burial. I think by now you know me. I don't attend burials. I only attend on, on, on special invitations. You have seen all the signs that this person is about to kill you. And to say, -ga -ba 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 -da -ga 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 -ga. you are joking with your life. You married an arm, you married an arm robber. Oh, we, we, we met in church, and I told you, church is the most dangerous place on earth. It's like a hospital. If you want to find any kind of disease, go to the hospital. You go to the hospital so you can be treated. But I'm telling you, the same place you are going for, for treatment. That's the place that is so dangerous. Others go, come back. Others go, they don't come back. They went alive, they come back in coffins. You come to church, you either receive a blessing or receive a curse. People died in church during the time of Peter. Ananias and Sapphira, they died. It is not the devil who killed them. So don't be cheated because someone is in church is speaking tongues and you say this is the eh? there is a woman who contacted me and say man of God whenever I am praying hallelujah whenever I am praying there is this man who appears appears you know he always appear are you following me every time I am praying the picture of this man comes very clearly to me Man of God, speak something. I want to know. Hello? Hello? So where I was seated, and then she sent a picture, a photo of the man she's talking about. And it is not the man who gave him the picture. She went somewhere and downloaded the photo and sent it to me. I said, this is there? So she's helping me to see. You know, I should also see the man, the picture of the man. Oh, this is the one that appears whenever you are praying. Okay. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm following. I never, trust to me, if you are listening to me, I never prayed. Hello? 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 I never prayed. Why should I lie? I never prayed. So, when I saw, even before she sent the picture, the, time, the first time she said, there is a man I always see whenever I am praying, she, he appears. And then later, she sent the photo. And I checked, I looked at the photo. I was not even interested with the photo. And I say, I will pray first, and then I will talk to you. I did not pray the way you know how to pray. I didn't. I've got different different ways for how for me. I have I pray differently. I may sit with you and we are talking, and I am seriously praying and not aware. Hello. 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 Are you hearing somebody? We are hearing you. Yes, Papa. Before one week was over, after the message came and the picture was sent, before one week was over, she came back to me and said, "There's no." In fact, before that, I asked her, 
have you met yeah yeah we are we are we are, we are in the same church answer my question have you met the two of you sat down and talked we are in the same we are in the same church and the reason why I was asking if they have sat down and talked I, I had my own reason I didn't want to be the fan you know all the time when people approach me man of God what do you think what, what, what do you think there's nothing I'm thinking I will tell you what God has already shown me I've got no business telling you what I'm thinking so I, I just say no I don't want to be the person to to give a negative response to this let me keep quiet so in the same week she saw some advert about the wedding of that man with another woman and she came back to me and said man of god there's no need of praying i've already confirmed the man is even getting married to another woman i never responded till today i never responded are you here we are here are you here somebody we are here We are in the year and the season of divine direction. What I have taught you today, take it into consideration. If I may ask you, someone is telling you, whenever I pray, so and so happens. If you can be tempted to join that person in the same prayer. Someone say, My, hey sister, I've been praying about this issue and God has told me, or oh, God has shown me A, B, C, D. You may be tempted to join your sister in the same prayer. Yet, you are entering into a deep deception that can even affect you as a person. When I was in Namibia, I say, and I think when I was also here in Kenya, look for a prayer partner. Look for what? Prayer partner. And I say, don't look for one who, who will want you to pray for them and they cannot pray for you. No. Look for someone who will be asking, where are you now? Eh? We need to pray. Stop whatever you're doing. We need to pray. Where are you? Are you in church? And you do the same to that person. You check each other. You hear me? Yes, we hear you. One can chase a thousand. Two will put ten thousand to flight. One can chase a thousand. But two can do what? Can put ten thousand to flight. Because two are better than one. one. Two are better than one. So if you are married, work your marriage so that it can work out for you. If you are aspiring to get married, prepare yourself for marriage because you will get married. And if you don't want to get married, keep quiet the same way you are keeping quiet. And it is done, stay like that. It's your choice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are hearing. God will never force you. It is about you. It's not about him. It's about you. So it's your life. God will never force you. And by the grace of God, I'll, I'll, I'll take you through a series of teachings on how God directs his people and how do you position yourself to be guided by God and escape the deception of the devil in this world. And the more you are guided by God and you are following the direction of God, even your prayer life becomes powerful and productive. Your evangelism becomes powerful and productive. Your giving becomes powerful and productive. Anything that you do in the name of the Lord becomes powerful and productive. You will see the end result of whatever you are doing. When you are divinely guided by God. So this year, I prophesy to all of you, you will not be cheated. You will not be conned. You shall be directed by God in Jesus' mighty name. I receive, Lord. You shall be directed by God in Jesus' mighty name. I receive. Amen, I receive. Amen, I receive. Every moment you want to make a decision, you will hear the voice of God and he will tell you, do this and do that. Don't do this and don't do that. May you receive that grace in the name of Jesus. I receive. I receive. You will not enter a vehicle that has been earmarked for accident. 
because accident is not your portion. Your life is protected by God and you will live here long on earth for the glory of God in the name of Jesus. I receive, I receive, Lord. Amen, I receive. Amen, Amen I receive. Those people who are thinking, or who think that they have lost something valuable in this life or you have lost an opportunity, in the kingdom there is no losing. And even if you have lost something, there is what you call supernatural restoration. Now, when God restores you, he does not restore you to an old version of what you lost. He restores you to a better version than what you lost in the first place. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. May you receive your restoration in the name of Jesus. I receive, Lord. I receive. May your health be restored fully in the name of Jesus. I receive. May your finances be restored fully in the name of Jesus. I receive. I receive. May your ministry be restored in the name of Jesus. I receive. May your business be restored in the name of Jesus. I receive, I receive, I receive. May your spiritual experience be restored in the name of Jesus. I receive, I receive. I, receive. I sanctify your dreamland and I deliver your dreamland. You will never waste your time talking to people who don't, not, who don't matter anymore. But you shall have an encounter with God in your dreams in the name of Jesus. I receive. I receive, I receive, I receive. Stand up on your feet wherever you are. I cover you all by the blood of Jesus. And I, I decree it is well with you beginning from today in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, I receive. I receive. Only goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shout I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive. I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive. And I pray for every single document you came here together with, whether it's a passport, whether it's a report, whether it's a letter, whether it's an application, any kind of documentation that you have. I speak a blessing and I decree that is a point of contact. Let a miracle happen in the name of Jesus. I receive. I receive. And I reverse anything that is speaking against you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. May God restore you in the name of Jesus. I receive, Lord. Amen. May God restore you in the name of Jesus. I receive, I receive. Amen. I bless you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty Thank you, name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Lay your right hand on your chest. Say, surely goodness and mercy. Surely goodness and mercy. Surely goodness and mercy. Shall follow me all the days of my life. Shall follow me all the days shall of my follow life. Me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. I pray for that person in that picture. There is a picture I am seeing. There is a picture I am seeing. I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. Say it was a prodos. Let a miracle happen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let a miracle happen. Yes, Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is done. It is done. done. Put your hands together for Jesus, somebody. Yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We have come to an end of our Sunday service today, and I'd like to appreciate all of you for making it. Congratulations. Tell your neighbor congratulations for making it to the service. Congratulations for making it. Congratulations for making it to the service. Tell your other neighbor congratulations for making it to the service today. 
Congratulations for making it. Congratulations for making it. So I also congratulate you. And first, I want to appreciate God for even making us, I mean, uh, allowing us to meet here again in this Sunday of Divine Direction. And I believe your lives will never remain the same again. Yes, Lord. Thank we are going to meet again here on Wednesday on Wednesday Intensive Prayer Unit. Say intensive. Amen. Intensive Prayer Unit. I intensive I, prayer unit. I can all hear you say intensive prayer unit. Intensive prayer unit. Intensive prayer unit. That is where all the impossible become possible. Amen. 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 For every single person that made this service a success, may God bless you. And for every single person Amen. that participated in this service, may God bless you. For all the attendees Amen. of this service, may God bless you. Amen. For Amen. every testimony Amen. that was shared on this platform, may God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I pray God will give you more time and grace so that you can be able to come into the house of God as you have confessed all the days of your life. Amen. I bless you all once again Amen. in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My name is the Demon Terminator coming to you from Langata Road Primary School opposite Wilson Airport, Nairobi, Kenya. Until I see you again, Thank you. this is the prophetic encounter where God is speaking each and every single day. And until I see you again, I love you all and shalom. Shalom.